Anthony Grasso here, bringing you financial news that you could use. In this uh, particular video, I'm going to do a stock analysis on ITI Life Sciences. Is this beaten down biotechnology company that's not profitable right now worth investing in? Well, let's find out together. I'm going to go over a summary of the company, its product offerings, recent headline news, financials, analyst predictions, and give it my buy, hold, or sell recommendation for both your short-term and long-term growth investors out there. And as always, folks, don't forget to smash that like button down below. Definitely helps. And consider subscribing and hit that notification bell if you like to your daily stock reviews and recommendations from an unbiased source. So let's get right into it. As always, folks, this video is brought to you by Weeble which is an online brokerage trading platform where you can buy stocks, options, ETFs, and cryptocurrencies. Now, if you sign up today and deposit any amount, you can get up to 12 free stocks by using my referral link in the description down below. All right, so what exactly is ITI Life Sciences? Now, it's a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company. It aims to transform the treatment of mental health disorders. It was founded in 2018 as a response to the significant unmet need and lack of innovation in the mental health treatment landscape. Now, ITI is dedicated to acquiring, incubating, and efficiently developing innovative uh, therapeutics to treat depression, anxiety, addiction, and other mental health disorders. By pulling resources and best practices, ITI aims to responsibly accelerate the development of new medicines across its companies to achieve clinically meaningful and sustained behavioral change in mental health patients. Now, I encourage everybody to check on their website and go to their quarterly two report that specifically goes over their timelines, pipelines and financials and everything that's happened. It's uh, in, in one, one of the big things It actually goes into great detail on the recent developments of each of their drug potentials. So I encourage everybody to actually bring that up. Now let's go ahead and look at some of the news of the company right now. So recently, uh, a couple of weeks ago, the company has announced that it's uh, trimmed down its pipeline to eight drug candidates. And then they took on some more debt to extend the cash runway into 2025. Now the three programs that they, that they cut were a mild traumatic brain injury candidate, uh, depression prospect and opioid use disorder. Now, uh, it's important that they slim down and and do cost optimization right now. And this debt isn't it's non dilutive. So it didn't dilute the shareholders. And now they have a cash runway to 2025 for research and development. So this could be some good news for the company. But first, let's go ahead and look at the, the books of the company. Look at the fundamentals real quick of uh, this company. Well, the stock price is currently trading at $4.75 a share. It's uh, it's definitely up from its lows of the past couple weeks. And the market capitalization is roughly $763 million. Now, let's go look at some of the valuation measures of this company to see what's the most appropriate. Well, since the company doesn't have any significant earnings right now or uh, or revenues, uh, the book, the price to book ratio is the most appropriate valuation measure. Now, ATI does seem expensive with the price to book ratio that they have. It's roughly around 2.4 times right now compared to the U.S. pharmaceutical industry average of 1.9 times and to its peer average of 1.7. So it's definitely trading above the industry and above its peers. But you can't really look at profitability numbers right now because it's they're solely in research and development and burning through cash to get their treatments approved over the next one to two to three to five years. Um, now looking now we got to look at the financial strength of this company to f figure out like are are they going to stay afloat? Well, they have more cash than its total debt. And the total, uh, the short-term assets of 323 million exceed its short-term liabilities of only 22 million and its long-term liabilities of 6.9 million. I think that was before they added on to be able to have a cash pot from that debt. Now they have the su sufficient cash runway, the company said through 2025, which is great. I had them out 1.9 years uh, with the free cash flow continues to, to, to decrease at the rate they were doing of 74% per year, but now that they got an extension of debt, it can go on into 2025. And uh, it is important to note that one institutional insider, Prestige Capital, purchased 612,000 shares of this company three to six months ago. Now, what exactly do the analysts say specifically regarding this company? Well, the average consensus is they buy, 
and they put a 12 month price target of $23 high is 50 and a low is six. Now that's taking consideration. They're expecting next year is the make it or break it, not make it or break it, but they're actually going to get something approved in their pipeline. There's nothing in phase three. I didn't see, but uh, it takes a long time to get these drugs through phase one, phase two, phase three, and finally FDA approval. So it's not in the short term that this is going to be done. It's definitely going to take a little longer. And when I look at the, there's no real uh, ratings. So the analyst reports, they're not really rating this company right now because it's not really anything to rate. They're a research and development company without any significant revenues. All right. So let me bring it back over here. So am I buy, hold or sell recommendation on ATI Life Sciences? I hear my thoughts. Now, the positive for this company is that it has a lot of cash on hand to fund the clinical drug trials and the enabling technologies that go with it. Now, in quarter two, the company continued to advance its programs and is looking forward to additional clinical milestones for the remainder of 2022 and beyond. Now, the company anticipates all eight drug compounds to be clinically development by the end of this year. That's huge news to be clinically developed like completely. So the company's development pipeline of pharmaceuticals, digital therapeutics, and precision mental health uh, approaches are supported by a total of 293 issued patents and 125 pending non-provisional patents. But I think the, the, the clinical trials, you know, they're going to have to get this approved mostly in 2023, have something, they need something in 2023. Now, I think it's important that they extended the cash runway into 2025 with non-dilutive loan of up to $175 million. Now, the company does claim that they anticipate significant cost savings for a company-wide cost optimization. Now, this additional uh, runway provides them with the ability to achieve numerous proof-of-concept data readouts without additionally diluting the shares going forward and reducing the stock price over and over. So they're trying to stabilize the stock price by saying we're not going to dilute the shares anymore we're just going to extend capital so and also one thing i like is what they're doing with their cost optimization initiatives to both reduce its expected operating expenses and prioritize its capital resources on research and development programs anticipated to be potentially the most valuable and meaningful opportunities for patients in its pipeline now first off i know there's a lot of comments i review that they want to want me to review all these speculative biopharmaceuticals. Now, with with any of them, it really comes down to: Do they have enough cash on hand for research and development for years to come, and not to dilute the shares in the meantime? Do they have a solid pipeline? You know, just one or two drugs they get approved could catapult the revenues for any biopharmaceutical company to fund another eight or nine drugs in pipeline. You know, so not, they have eight candidates. So that's what I like about it. And I like that they trim down their pipelines and say, well, we don't really think these three are going to work. So let's just cut off these and let's focus on what we think can get approved over the next two to three years. And they took on that non-dilutive debt to keep priority programs moving forward. Now, that being said, based on all of that, I am a long-term speculative buy recommendation on ATI Life Sciences. And I put a two-year price target of $25 a share. Now, that's only if and only if one of the drugs in their pipeline gets approved. Because once it gets approved, we would see projected revenues numbers go up. And I don't even know what the projected revenues numbers are because we don't know which drug is going to get approved. So I'm not going to speculate on which revenue numbers on which drug that they're going to get and how much money they're going to get from each of those drugs. That's still in the future. We don't know any of that. We do know that it's going to be a lot of money. We just don't know how much money. Um, but they're not even close to completing any phase three trials yet. So currently there's no FDA approvals. You know, once drugs go into phase three clinical trials, that's when biopharmaceutical companies stock, it will go parabolic. I mean, it might even go to 50 if, if they start getting approved. Now, what I like about ITI, it's among the better capitalized biotechs out there. And this would be a three to five year buy and hold and pray their drugs get approved to see any return. Now, for, for those that are uh, don't want any speculative bets, right? You know, this is this is only for the risky of the risk. 
this is as risky as it gets, you know? So I think it's going to maintain or maybe dip a little lower in its current stock price over the near term. You might see some, you know, it's seeing some resistance right now, but this would be a long-term play three to five years. So there you have it, folks. Tell, tell me what your thoughts. Do you think, you think these eight drugs are going to get approved and this company go hyperbolic? Or do you think it's just going to be another biopharmaceutical company that in the end it just goes da 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 boom? I don't know. Only time will tell. All right. So there you have it, folks. And as always, don't forget to smash that like button down below. Definitely helps. And consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell if you like your daily stock reviews and recommendations from an unbiased source. Until the next stock update video later today, folks. Ciao.